Hello everybody and welcome back and the party are in this room here. They have just obliterated quite a large number of goblins, I think 28 and 12 direwolves. This has been enough XP, especially since the direwolves offer 125 XP each and times 12, that's nearly 1500. That has been enough to put Liz over her next level. However, she is not in a position to level up unless the party go back and rest somewhere. That really doesn't seem to be an option, because we have made such a racket that all the other goblins in this lair will know that we're here. So we might end up doing Liz's level up in a couple of sessions later. We'll see how quickly we get through this. Now we're faced with two doors, and if Liz listens at either of the doors, I'll do orange for this one and green for this one. Well, she does hear noises behind this one. It's easy to make out that it's goblin language, but it seems to be what you might call huddled noises, whispering and furtive behaviour, I think would be the best way to describe it. She doesn't hear anything here, so the party are going to walk into this room. And this is what they see. Well, they see another of these rooms constructed with stone walls built between the stone trees. This room is roughly about 60 wide by 40. And there is a door here in the southeast. And another one in the west. There is also a tree in the middle of this room. And let us roll for surprise on a 1 to 3. And yes, this is not good news. Ah, I also forgot I said at the end of last time that Donard would drink a potion of healing. <clears throat> Five, that's better than <laughs> nothing. So his health is up to 15. In this room, suddenly out from hiding behind this tree, it must be quite a large tree, we are ambushed by nine goblins, two of which are goblin bodyguards. I have added an extra bodyguard to up the ante a bit. We have three people in our front line and Liz and Malin are hanging well back. With nine goblins in total, that is three spears thrown at each of our front liners. So I will do the three spears thrown at Sylvia. And both of those miss. I'll do two each and then I'll do the last round. Two on Donard and one hits him for five points. There's his potion of healing gone. Two on Carrick. Both of those miss. Right, and so there's one spear thrown on each. So one on Sylvia misses. Now that two of these spears are thrown by the bodyguards who have a thack of 18 and that with a short range bonus goes up to 17. That misses Donard and that one misses Carrick. So that is the surprise round over. Round number one and we get initiative. Right well we have archery to do and our only archer is Liz and she misses, right. The only spell that Malin has really is Web and he can't cast Web from a distance. It's got a really short casting range. He might throw one of his throwing daggers. And he misses, right, spells. Now Donard is gonna back off. He's got five hit points left. That isn't the bravest thing you can do, but it's the most sensible. So we are left with melee and that is up to Sylvia, oh, who seems to find good form with her sword. She hits and she kills a goblin. And Carrick, who um, misses, damn it. So it's their round. So this is melee and there are eight opponents left. That I'm afraid is four on each of our front liners. 
that misses Sylvia. Her AC is one, so they need a 18 to hit her. Wow, and one just cleaves six points off her. She's down to 10. Four on Carrick. Both of those miss. And then he's got the two goblin bodyguards on him. Wow, and one hits him for seven points. He's down to 19. Okay, round number two. And we get initiative again. Liz had better hit. And she does hit and she kills another goblin. Malin feels a bit futile. And he throws a dagger into the back of someone's head. And it's Carrick's head. So he did one point damage. I can't mitigate that to half damage. So that's Carrick down to 18. Spells. Donard has a hold person. And he's going to cast hold person on four people of his choice. Let's just double check our hold person. It can paralyze up to four people. And they each get a saving throw. And he's going to do the two goblin bodyguards. And they both fail their saving throw. They need a 16 or more. And he's just going to choose the two goblins on Sylvia. And they both fail. So that is four goblins out of action. Which means there are two goblins left on Carrick and one left on Sylvia. So let's see what they can do. And Sylvia can miss. And Donard can... Or, and Carrick can hit and kill. So there are two goblins left. What happens to their morale? And it holds up. They have two morales. One morale is with the goblin chief alive. And that is a 10. So yes. It's both their turns. So... One on Sylvia. Hits for three points. She's down to seven. And one on Carrick. Misses. It's round number two. And they get initiative. And that one hits Sylvia again. She's down to three HP. And that one misses Carrick. Liz misses. Donard can take out a sling this round. Sylvia misses. And Carrick hits and kills Goblin on him. There's one Goblin left and it's round number three. And it's mutual. I'll do it first. And it misses Sylvia and it would have hit hard. And I'll do her attack. And she misses. I'll do Carrick's attack. Yes. No, he misses. I'll do Liz. Ah, yes. Dead Eye Liz hits and kills that goblin. There are four goblins paralyzed. Well, we are going to dispatch them. And we immediately have to use the Staff of Healing on Sylvia. Man, that's five points. She's up to eight. That still isn't good. Right, so we'll examine this room in a minute. Right, so the party notice here that there are prison bars. And this looks to be like a cell. And in the cell, watching the fight with great interest, is an old, frail woman. Her name is Babushka. She is just an ordinary human. It's a shame she wasn't a level three cleric with two healing spells but she herself has only one hit point. And we're also told that the door to the cell can be easily picked and you get a 60% bonus. So Liz currently has 35. So she really has to screw this one up. And she rolls 90. Okay, so she, yep, she nearly screwed that up. So we can open the cell and 
at least to comfort this woman, Babushka. But the thing we're going to tell her is to stay in there. Now, we want to know what she knows. And she is able to tell us that there's a goblin chief and he has some bodyguards. She's not quite sure of the number. Now, we really don't have time for a conversation with her and she has got a lot more to tell us. But she can point us to the direction of this door here as to where the goblin's chief throne room is. And she does mention a goblin called Vlack, who we have met and killed. He was one of those random encounters which the DM is encouraged to drop in. Here, if you look at wilderness events, Vlack's retinue, we've done that, we've killed Vlack. So we have some intel that this is the goblin's throne room. Now how on earth are we going to handle this? Donard is no longer frontliner. Carrick has 18 HP. Sylvia is going back on range. She has 8 HP. I'm going to have a quick look at who has a healing potion. Right, Donard has used his. Carrick is going to have to use his. He also has a potion of speed and a potion of growth, which we know from experience he used these to kill a dragon. We also have three potions of invisibility. Right, and a web spell. I think we are going to have to use the potion of speed. And it would be good to remind ourselves what a potion of speed does. And it seems to be from the expert rule set. Okay. The user moves twice as fast, may attack twice per round, and perform other actions except spellcasting at twice normal speed. Yeah, we're going to take that. Firstly, we're going to drink the Potion of Healing. Okay, five. Well, he's up to 23. Right, then he is also going to drink the Potion of Speed. And I will have to double check to see how long that lasts for. Right, a potion lasts for 7 to 12 turns, unless noted otherwise. Now how do you roll 7 to 12? That's 1d6 plus 6, and this is turns. So that is 10 turns. Right, I'll make a note of that. And also, just before we open this door, Donard is going to cast Bless. And I'm going to write Bless on a post-it note, because I keep forgetting. <laughs> Liz, Sylvia and Donard are going to go here on ranged. Malin is going to be here. Carrick is going to throw open this door here. So what the plan is, is that he will take the first brunt of the attack. He will then back off using a combat maneuver called fighting withdrawal. He doesn't get any attacks, but he can defend at full AC, and he does move at half the normal rate. That is now back up to the normal rate because of the potion of speed. And then, fingers crossed, when all the goblins move into this antechamber here, Malin is going to cast Web. Right, that's the plan. Let's see how it goes. Carrick is going to put the plan into action and throw open this door. We're told in the book that if this fight lasted for more than three rounds, these goblins automatically get initiative. That has been the case. They're expecting us. If you remember, this lot here got a bonus to their surprise rolls. These ones have gone one stage better and simply win the first round of initiative. In this room, there are five ordinary goblins, five goblin bodyguards, and the king. This is Kloss, and it's him who gives his name to the Kloss Lunk tribe. Carrick is going to be hit by a barrage. Let's see how many spear attacks our dwarf survives. Two miss. Another two miss. Four miss. But that's eight of them all together. And all ten of them bounce off his shield. You know, he is short, <laughs> you know, stocky, and he's hiding behind that shield. Right now, the next move 
is for him to back off into this chamber area here. And the goblins have used up all their missiles. So we're now effectively on to round two and they have to move forward, which they are going to do. But let's get some initiative for round number two. And we get initiative, that's good. Now this gives Liz and Sylvia a chance to get a couple of shots in through these doors here. They do not get a short range bonus, and, but they have a bless spell. So I'll do Liz, who hit. She effectively throws a nine. That's enough to hit, and she does enough damage to kill one of the goblins. Sylvia. Yep, she kills another of the goblins. So that is the missile round. Yeah, Donard is going to try and throw a sling. He hates a sling. But nonetheless, his missile Thaco is 18. Plus one for the bless. He hits and he does three plus the one damage, which is enough to kill another goblin. That puts the goblins on a bit of a back foot. So we're going to have the five goblins rush in and Carrick is going to hold the line so he does not get his attack. Malin is not ready to cast web so we will do the five goblin bodyguards. The king is on his throne shouting things like kill them, kill them all with tactical genius. Now given the tightness of this area there's no way he's going to be able to be surrounded by five goblins all fighting with battle axes so he will take three of them and two of them miss. And the third one misses. But all five of them are here. It's round number three. And they get initiative. The king has ordered the other two small goblins to move up. I'm going to say that if Carrick is about here, a fourth of the bodyguards will have been able to maneuver to one side. So he has four goblin bodyguards on him. And one hits for eight damage. They never hit for one damage. And those two miss. Okay, it's our turn. We are going to do missiles again. Liz hits, takes five points off one of the bodyguards, which is off to one side. Six points, sorry, as we have my bless post-it note. One of the bodyguards is down to three. Sylvia, right, now they do get a short range bonus. She's effectively thrown an 11 for the, the short range and the blast which is enough to hit and she does one plus two damage is three points and that's enough to kill that goblin bodyguard there are four left donard is going to try and throw a sling stone and he does not hit even with a short range bonus and a blast spell Right, it's spells, and Malin is here, and he is going to take them by the flank, and he's going to cast Web here, and that should be enough to take on all four of the goblin bodyguards in the web, and it will stop the other goblins from moving round the side. So they're looking a bit stuck, and it's round number four. And it's mutual, they can't do anything. Right, it might be flask of oil time and a torch. We'll do missiles again. Now there doesn't seem to be any bonuses if somebody is trapped and ensnared in a web. You would think they would be an easier target, but that doesn't seem to be the case. So Liz fumbles. Right, I'm afraid that's friendly fire on Carrick. And again, I can't roll for less than half damage because one is one. Sylvia does enough to hit and do five damage to a goblin bodyguard. It's down to four. Donard is going to get a torch ready. That's his go. And Carrick can attack at the edge of the web. 
Webb has got quite a confined area, so his reach ought to be able enough to take on any of the goblins which are on the edge of the web. So he gets two attacks per round. And again, there doesn't seem to be any advantage to the fact that his targets are ensnared. That doesn't seem to alter their armor class. But let's see what he does with his two attacks. While well, they both hit and he does 3 damage plus his bonuses of 4 is 8. He does 11 damage. He kills another bodyguard. There are 3 left. Right. Let's do initiative for round number 4. And we get initiative. Malin is going to throw the flask of oil. That's his missile round. Liz and Sylvia are going to target the two goblins which are behind the web. Liz hits and kills one. Sylvia with the short range and blast, that's an eight. As she misses, Donard is going to go up and he's going to torch the web. Right. Now, I have been told I made a mistake. When you look at the rules, it says even though the web burns for two rounds, it only does 1d6 damage. But the flask of oil burns for two rounds. So during the first round, they will take 1d6 burn damage from the web. And the second round, the web will still be intact, but they will take the burning oil damage. Okay, so round number one, Donard throws the torch into the web. The oil ignites it immediately. And each of the three goblins in there take 1d6 damage. Okay, one is dead and two are down to six. And the goblin king is obviously incensed. I will roll for his morale and the morale of the goblin that is left standing. And it holds up. Right, so we're on round number five, and this is the second and final round of the web. The web is still intact, but we're going to roll for the burning oil. This oil does 1d8 damage. So let's see what happens to the two bodyguards still in the web. And they both die. So there is one goblin left and a goblin chief. And the web has gone, even if the ground is a bit hot. But Carrick has a ring of fire resistance, so the hot ashes mean nothing to him. But let's see if we can shoot the remaining goblin. Liz can quite easily. Can Sylvia get a shot in on the goblin chief? She can't, she misses. I didn't actually roll for initiative in round 5. That gives the Goblin Chief room to move up and to face off Carrick. And it's mutual, so I will roll for his hit and damage. He does 1d8 plus 1. Ah, oh, and he fumbles. Yes, clearly he is foaming at the mouth with fury and, and has turned berserk and is hacking at everything. Now Carrick's turn and our dwarf has two attacks per round. This Goblin King has 15 HP. Carrick is blessed. He does 1d12 plus 4 damage. Right. And he easily hits AC6. He does 11 plus 2 is 13 plus 8 is 21. And with two swipes with his sword, he just takes the Goblin King's head off. And that fight is over and we find ourselves in the goblin chamber here. And Carrick did take damage there. He took 9 points. He is at 14 HP. Right, so we'll examine the goblin chamber in a moment. Right, as much as the party would like to hang around the throne room and search it for treasure. Because experience has told us that's where the treasure is. Carrick reminds everybody that he's on a timer. In other words, his potion of speed will run out at some point. So what the party do is there are animal skins and furs hanging on the walls like tapestries and they rip them off and they find a door here. So they listen at this door. 
Liz doesn't hear anything, and so they open it, and it opens into an empty room. And we're told there's a circular door at this end, and Carrick, at double speed, just like, zips across to it. Donard whispers to Liz, and he just says, don't say anything about the speed of those little legs. And that makes Liz laugh. She hasn't had much of a laugh so far, has she? So we're told at this side of the room the door is circular and again Liz will listen at it. She doesn't hear anything and they open the door and what they find is a tree trunk, a petrified tree trunk that has been hollowed out. Maybe it was naturally hollowed before it was petrified. But it's been laid over this river like a tunnel and while Carrick is waiting for the others to catch up He is naturally curious and lucky he has his dwarven skill because he notices there's a trap door in the middle of the tunnel which would plummet somebody into the river below. So he runs across to the other side avoiding the trap door. He points it out to everybody else of course and he opens the door into the next room which is here and I think we'll end this session here. Right, well there was a lot of fighting in that session and we did cover a lot of the map and I think we'll finish this wolf skull lair next time so I will see you then.